Now, ordinarily, I am super excited to come outside each morning and do my chores and greet the animals. And on the days that I'm shooting a video, I'm often very, very excited to be shooting a video for you guys. But I'm just gonna be a little bit honest here, today is not one of those days. You see, for starters, I've been sick. My wife, Allison, who's an emergency room nurse practitioner, she caught a cold last week and then she passed that cold along to me. And then on top of that, I've had a lot of problems with my animals and that's what I actually need to talk to you about in today's video. I think it all started last week when I noticed that something was wrong with Molly Murder Mittens, one of our three barn cats. Molly is usually very sociable. She's usually very friendly. She's always the first barn cat I see when I open up the door each morning to start my days. But last week she wasn't usually there when I would get up in the morning. And when I looked at her, she just seemed shyer and lower energy. She seemed to be hiding out in the barn more often. And eventually it got to a point where she was skipping meals, which is very unlike Molly Murder Mittens. And so I was starting to grow very concerned until Thursday of last week when it went like a whole 24 hour period without seeing Molly Murder Mittens at all. She was just gone. No breakfast, no dinner, no hanging out by the barn in the midday sunshine. She had just vanished and there was just no sign or trace of Molly Murder Mittens. Well, that next morning after skipping her second breakfast in a row, I went out to the post office and I came back from the post office and as I drove up, I saw her out by the barn and she was kind of laying down in a very weird position and posture and she looked very weak to me. So I scooped her up, I put her into a cat carrier. She didn't even fight me going into the cat carrier, which is usually an ongoing battle. Even though Molly had just gotten out of surgery, she was like fighting tooth and nail. She was unhappy. She was kicking and thrashing. As I was driving them back from the vet, she was fighting. And mind you that my vet had warned me that they had doped her up and they said that she would be very sedate for the next few days, which was most definitely not the case. And the good news was while I was driving her off to the vet, she did start singing the song of her people while she was in the cat carrier. So that seemed like a positive sign. <laughs> And the vet checked her out and she did like a full panel of exams, testing her, making sure everything was normal. And the news that came back was she was 100% fine and normal and there was nothing going on and there was no variances from her last visits, everything looked good. And so the vet might have politely said to me that I was being a hypochondriac. But after my experiences of the last uh, few weeks with Abby Dog, I wasn't taking any chances with any of my beloved animals and so that's why I did what I did. It was at that point that I let her out of the cat carrier that she vanished and I did not see her again on the farm. And just a fair warning, this is where this video story gets kind of sad. You see, because Molly Murder Mittens wasn't the only animal on our farm to go missing lately. You see, because a couple of days ago, I noticed that actually one of my favorite ducks had gone missing. So as longtime followers of our farm, the Quack Pack, as they're familiar, you know, ducks were the first animals that we got on our farm. Back in 2018, I got a delivery of 40 Khaki Campbell ducks, and that's really how things got started. Uh, would you look at this? Ron Swanson is the only duck on our farm who has figured out how Toby's doggy door works. So she's always going back and forth. She is an odd duck, that's for sure. And in fact, of those 40 ducks, I think I still have about four or five of them that are still in my flock to this day. But back in the fall of 2018, a couple neighbors of ours had ducks and they didn't want to keep them anymore and so they offered them to me. And I said, sure, I'll take them. They were actually two Pekin ducks, so those big fluffy white ducks. And my wife Allison promptly named them Samuel Puddle Duck and his wife, Jemima Puddle Duck. Now when the Puddle Ducks first arrived at our farm, they were very different than the other ducks that we had. And they were also actually a little bit older. They had been around for a couple of years. I don't exactly even know how long, but they were not year old ducks like my ducks on the farm. In fact, Jemima Puddle Duck was already laying eggs and the first egg that we got on our farm came as a result of Jemima laying an egg. And although they were big and clumsy, they fit in really well with the rest of our flock. And I really enjoyed having Samuel and Jemima in our flock. That next spring, I gave a bunch of eggs to our local elementary school in the kids as a class project hatched out a bunch of those eggs. Two of the hatchlings were pure Pekin ducks that were the product of Samuel and Jemima. And so they became Delilah Puddle Duck and Samson Puddle Duck. And that is how the Puddle Ducks ended up here on our farm. 
Now, if you look at our duck flock today, you'll notice that there really aren't many Pekin ducks in the mix. The types of ducks that we have are a combination of Khaki Campbell, Cayuga, and Runner Duck, which for having a system of ducks that are free range, they seem to be the breeds that do the best out here on our farm. Pekin ducks, meanwhile, are a big, white, lumbering meat breed of ducks. They can grow to be very large, and Jemima and Samuel Puddle Ducks specifically were actually jumbo Pekins, which are designed to grow out to like full size in like, I don't know, eight or nine weeks, and so they get very big. And while I love their nice, gentle personalities, I just don't think that Pekin ducks work as well here on our farm. And Delilah Puddle Duck was the first of the Puddle Ducks to leave the farm. Back in the fall of 2019, just shortly before Toby Dog arrived at the farm, we actually had a bobcat that was stalking our farm for a number of months. Like I even had a couple of encounters where the thing was like 20 feet away from me at the time. And ironically, the day that the ducks were slated to move into their new, more secure duck house, that's actually now our dog barn, I am fairly certain that a bobcat snatched Delilah Puddle Duck right from over here, dragged her over into those woods right behind me over there, and we never saw from her again. In fact, you guys might notice that this plaque that a very generous viewer once sent us a few years back, it actually says that the ye old quack house is in memory of Puddle Duck. The first Puddle Duck to go was actually Delilah Puddle Duck. But then actually a few weeks later after the disappearance of Delilah Puddle Duck. Samuel Puddle Duck, Jemima's husband, he actually got to the point where he could barely walk. You know, again, because he was a jumbo Pekin, he just put on so much weight and got so big that he wasn't having a very good quality of life. And so I made the decision to put him down and we culled him with our geese that fall. It was a choice that I had made, but it didn't make it any less of a sad choice. And we actually ended up commemorating him because we ate his body on a night that we had some friends over and we made like essentially a duck version of cock and it was amazing and we called it the Feast of St. Samuel. I know that must sound weird to some of you, but it felt like a really good way to honor his life. Let's see what we have going on inside here. Oh, would you look at that? You guys might have noticed that we were missing one of our chickens. That's because Rosie has taken up residency here in the dog barn. Hey, okay, 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 I'm not gonna bug you. Yeah, she decided that this would make a good spot to lay a nest, and so she's got a bunch of eggs under there, and I don't know, in the not too distant future, she'll probably hatch out some little babies. I might actually let her just take over the dog barn for about a month or so. Because the dogs don't actually use it this time of year. Toby Dog in particular prefers to sleep underneath it because it's very cool. So they probably won't have a use for it until like late September at the earliest. And so this might actually become a brooding house for some new weird chickens. Now Samson Puddle Duck who was Samuel and Jemima Puddle Duck's son. He was an absolute legend. He ultimately grew to be the largest duck we ever had on our farm. With the combination of Jemima and Samuel's genetics, Samson just grew to be ginormous. In fact, my first ever like breakout hit video that I ever had on our YouTube channel happened to be a video just talking about Samson and how big he was. But sadly, after a couple of years, Samson grew to be a little bit too big. And eventually, much like his father, he grew so big that he couldn't walk, and I ended up having to put him down. And that was probably the hardest animal butchering I've ever had to do. It absolutely broke my heart. And after the death of Samson, I made the decision that I was no longer gonna have Pekin ducks on our farm. I mean, my plan was I was gonna let Jemima live out her years and have a happy duck life here at Goldshaw Farm, but I wasn't making any sort of plans to bring on new Pekin ducks because really, they just were not a breed that fit the way that I was raising ducks here on our farm. And by the way, while I'm over here with you guys looking at the chickens, I did want to show you a science experiment I did. Yesterday, I put out these fly papers. They were fly traps that were covered in flies. And I wanted to see if the chickens could actually deal with them and eat them without getting stuck and having feathers all over the place. And now if you look at this, right, there's pretty much only wings and legs that are left on the actual flypaper. So good job, girls. That's free food for you, huh? Here, I'll give you regular food too. Yeah, if you ever wonder how I get that shot, that's how I do it. You know, feeding the chickens flies would potentially make for like an infinite food glitch for my birds. Cause it's like, we never have a shortage of flies here on the farm. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, I would eat those candies that were stuck to the paper. I don't know, it's got a very similar vibe.
Now, as far as Jemima Puddle Duck goes, after the death of her daughter, husband, and son, she ended up living a very, very happy life here on the farm. You know, Jemima fit in really well with the other ducks. She had other duck friends. She enjoyed swimming and eating. But lately I noticed that she seemed like she was losing a step or two, if you catch my drift. I mean, she was always much slower than all the other ducks. But in the last, I don't know, maybe two months or so, I noticed that she was falling further and further behind. She seemed like she was having some trouble walking. I was also noticing that she was losing weight and it also seemed like, I don't know, she just wasn't grooming herself as well and her feathers looked dirtier and messier all the time. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on, Kels. Hey, Kels, come on, fresh grass, come on. And so yesterday afternoon, I decided to go looking for Jemima Puddle Duck, and I actually took the drone up and started searching the permaculture orchard. And yes, I did end up finding her, and unfortunately, she had passed away. And I gotta admit, I'm actually feeling really sad about the whole thing right now. I really loved that duck. I thought she was a great part of our farm. And now, the last of the puddle ducks is gone. And she'll be remembered. She's no longer here. You know, one of the reasons I actually was so motivated to write the Toby Dog book and why I wanted to put it out there is I felt that there was like such an element of farm life that would happen, but it was so exceptionally ephemeral. Like each day would happen and it would pass and it would never come back again. And things change and move so quickly with the shifting of the seasons here on the farm. And even the animals and creatures here on the farm, it can often feel like they come and go so quickly that I wanted to figure out a way to like capture it and, and freeze it in time. And not just preserve it for other people so that it could be shared, but really even just for myself so I could look back and re-experience it. Sorry, sorry. I didn't want to do this. I get kind of choked up every time I think about this whole concept. And so writing the book and capturing the story of Toby Dog and the animals on the farm was like an attempted way to do that so that I could have something to look back on and re-experience like all the wonderful memories. And you know it's funny because Jemima Puddle Duck actually features very prominently in the new Toby Dog book. She is a supporting character, but she plays like a really important role in the plot and Samson's in the book. And so just even going back and re-experiencing the book, it reminds me of that time when Toby Dog was a puppy and he was on our farm and he would see the puddle ducks and I don't know, it just <sighs> brings back a real nostalgia for like the winter of 2019 into 2020. And you know, I'll have that plus the old videos of Jemima, plus even just my own memories that I keep up in here to look back on and, and remember her, but yeah. She's gone and we no longer have puddle ducks here on the farm and I will admit I'm a little bit saddened by that fact. And I do know that there's going to be some folks in the comments who are saying, well, you should have brought her to a vet. You knew that she wasn't doing well. But honestly, guys, I felt like it was her time to go. You know, I don't usually take our ducks and geese and chickens to a vet. There actually aren't even any, like, aviary vets really all that close to us to begin with. And if I had a flock scale problem, like an epidemic that was hitting all of my birds, I could see bringing in a vet to get help. But when it comes to just the health of one bird, it's always been DIY veterinary care here at the farm, which is a very distinct line I draw with the poultry versus say, the cattle where I do have a vet who will bring in or the dogs and cats who are kind of equal part farm animal as well as family member and they will always go to the vet and that's why I was so quick to rush off Molly murder mittens to the vet and I will definitely say that yesterday afternoon was an extreme low point on the farm because here I was just feeling miserable with a cold and I was having to clean up the remains of Jemima puddle duck and my beloved Molly murder mittens had been missing for a couple of days and I didn't know what I was gonna do about it and so yeah I was really at a low point there. Which brings me back to the topic that I started this depressing video with. The disappearance of Molly Murderman. Well, like I said, when I came back in from doing my farm burial for Jemima Puddle Duck, I was most definitely at a farming low point. But that is where farm life can often surprise you. Because when I came back down, much like I see right here, Molly Murder Mittens was right there waiting for me. Yes, that is right. Much like she's doing right now. She was there hanging out with me, ready and waiting. And she seems like she's back to normal. I mean, all three barn cats seem like they're back to normal. They are their usual surly barn cat self. And she doesn't seem any worse for wear. But I actually 
had to guess, I think she was kind of mad at me because I took her to the vet probably in the first place. And so, I don't know, like it usually is, it's the farmer's fault. But yes, our Molly Murder Mittens is doing well. Of course, I will say, I think all the barn cats are hungry. Don't worry, I'm gonna feed all the barn cats. Come on out, flashlight. Say hi to everybody, too. Yes, that's right, flashlight continues to make her recovery. But she's actually doing really, really well right now. All right, here you go, my hungry barn cats. Eat your breakfast. Come on. Jane, stop being a pest. 